For decades, as he traveled the world and met its leaders, Fidel Castro was a major target, in danger from the CIA's dirty tricks department and from all the Cuban exiles who wanted him dead. And for 17 years, Juan Reynaldo Sanchez protected Fidel. He was intensely loyal and a total believer in Castro and Castroism. Then, 20 years ago, his brother defected to the US. For the Cuban authorities, that made Juan Sanchez a serious risk. He lost his job and in 1994 was thrown in jail, but eventually escaped and made his way to Florida. Tell me what it was like being with Fidel Castro. What kind of person is he? What did you feel like when you were with him? Fidel, eh, yo diría que tenía una doble vida. I'd say Fidel had a double life. That's the side I saw of him. Fidel Castro had a public image of a modest and simple, unassuming person and even affable. But in his private life, Fidel was something quite different. Pero en la vida privada, Fidel era otra cosa bien distinta. His private life was always kept as a state secret in Cuba. So he's gone from being a worshipper of Castro, willing to lay down his life for him, to hating him and thinking he's a phony. Hence his book, The Secret Life of Fidel Castro. In it, Sanchez accuses him of being a multimillionaire who owns 20 houses, a getaway island and various yachts. These are all accusations Castro has faced before, and he and his officials strongly deny every one of them. He maintains that as leader, he lived on his official salary, 36 US dollars a month. What we've tried to do in the book is to prove and demonstrate to the public that Fidel is a man with possessions like that of no other Cuban today. Cubans can't even dream of that. No other person in Cuba has a private marina with four yachts, two fishing vessels and more than 100 men to look after that exclusive marina for Fidel Castro's personal use. Sanchez was still Fidel's bodyguard when I went to Cuba for Newsnight back in February 1993. You can see him in the crowd behind the great man just before I call out my question. Castro, whose formal speeches used to last seven hours, took over 20 minutes to answer me. From the crowd of journalists, I asked him about the complaints of so many Cubans about the conditions of their lives here. We aren't, he said, the usual type of politicians who try to fool the people. We tell the truth. We explain the great difficulties. The most serious allegation Sanchez makes is that Castro gave protection to a known drug smuggler though he doesn't suggest that Castro benefited from this financially. In 1989, I overheard a conversation between Fidel Castro and the then interior minister through some headphones connected to the microphones in Fidel's office. The minister was briefing Fidel on drug trafficking deals. That was the moment when Fidel stopped being my idol. To me, he was the greatest thing. He was the man for whom I was ready to die. I was willing to die if Fidel was attacked. But from that moment, I decided to find a way out because I could not come to terms with the fact that I was protecting a man who had publicly denied any involvement in drug trafficking. That shocked me. He had this strange group of people that he liked, aside from Eastern European dictators and others. Uh, he also used to invite Barbara Walters, the American television personality, to, the, to, the, to his secret island, didn't he? One of the fundamental features of Fidel's personality that I witnessed was his great ability to manipulate. He not only manipulated me, a member of his personal guard, but he also manipulated presidents and personalities from writers to economists, and that's one of his characteristics. Together with that, there's another feature, which is he's very opportunistic. He knows how to find the exact moment to achieve what he wants when he wants it. Will communism in Cuba 
survive Fidel Castro, Raúl Castro, or when they go, will it go also? Yo creo que los problemas eh, graves en Cuba. Well, I think the real problems in Cuba will start when Fidel dies. Most of the difficulties will appear then. Van a venir ahí. Raúl lacks Fidel's qualities. Fidel is an intelligent person, charismatic. Some people consider themselves to be Fidelistas, and of course Fidel has the support and loyalty of the people. Raúl, on the other hand, is not half as intelligent as Fidel. He doesn't have his charisma, and of course he doesn't have as many people in Cuba who would follow him when that time comes. But not even Sanchez suggests that Castro throws Berlusconi-like bunga-bunga parties. And he's certainly not another Colonel Gaddafi with depraved appetites and a grotesquely wasteful way of life. Instead, Castro emerges from the book a bit like the long-serving boss of a family firm who's inclined to treat the business as his own property. Yet even this will be shocking to Cubans who for more than 50 years have tended to see him as one of themselves, a genuine revolutionary with simple tastes. This is basically Juan Sanchez's revenge. Once he'd gladly have taken a bullet for Fidel, now he just wants to destroy him.